Have you ever had to deal with asynchronous tasks in Ember? Let's take a look at Ember concurrency. So the other day I had to do some asynchronous tasks in Ember and I was trying to find a good add-on and I found something called Ember concurrency. Now it's been out for a while and it solves a lot of problems. So uh, let's take a look at it. So I went ahead and created an example. Um, if you can take a look here, this is the add-on Ember concurrency. So loading UI while a task is running is one example, but it does quite a few things. It uses this uh, function star, which is part of ES6. Let's see, function star. It's a generator. See so here, the function star declaration defines a generator function, which turns a generator object. And then you can actually yield from it. So it's really good for situations where you have synchronous, asynchronous code and you need to do certain things. Um, so it's easier to explain with an example. And by the way, there's a great video on how to do this on their webpage. Um, Alex, the creator, created it and he did doing the Glo Global Ember Meetup. So this is gonna be, if you already watched that video, this is very similar. I'm gonna do a similar example, but I just wanted to get the word out on this. So I have a Ember app here can see here here's the directory structure I have in my controller I have a data some properties I have this fetch data method and then I have this actions I have get info and I have tmux running so I already have a server up and running and if you look this is what it does so you can see here when you hit when you press when you press a button it triggers the get info action, which sets is idle this property here to false. It's actually I, I could use something called toggle property, which does the same thing, but I just decided to use this dot set instead. And then I'm taking this fetch data method. Um, so you can see here I'm using something called Ember RSV B promise because I'm using promises, and that makes it so it's thenable. If you take a look at the documentation tells you what a promise is tells you how to use it so what I'm saying I'm also using something called ember.run later if you're not familiar with it that's just the way you can do some timing functions in ember because of the way ember deals with the whole uh, the different scope of ember you can't just uh, run timeouts so we just basically creating a random number from 1 through 10 and then creating a message object and so what I'm doing is soon as it resolves and it since I'm running I'm waiting a second for it to to resolve then as soon as it resolves it sets data and then it puts finally once the once everything's done it sets it back to false and then I'm using font awesome for my icon so it kind of goes like this so I have my, I have two routes, I have an other route and a home route. When you press me, my little spinner goes for a second and then it has a random number. Press it again, another four. So if you can notice, I had to do this, this kind of guards in here. And what this does is it makes sure that, the, that I haven't, my handlebars here, I have this if statement. So if is it's idle, it shows the spinner. If not, it shows the data. And that way, while it's thinking, because it takes a one second before to get the information back, it'll show a spinner, and that's why it shows a spinner. But there is some problems with this. If I press it a bunch of times, you can see it's going through a bunch of random numbers. And then in that case, I would have to go in here and set some kind of other guard where if is idle is already true, like an if statement, then don't do anything, and then make sure I set it back to well, it's already set to false here, so I'd have to put some more if statements. So it's not the most elegant situation, and it can get complicated. There's also another problem. I'm using controllers here, but let's go and refactor this so we can use a component instead. And by the way, we can take a look here. Ember run. It's part of the life cycle. You can see here, later invokes the past target method optional for ever period of time. You should use this 
instead of using set timeout. And that's all b because of how Ember does its life cycle. Here's the whole Ember run namespace. It's the Ember run loop. All right, so let's see if we can refactor some of this. Okay, here it is. Press me, hello. Yep, so it's working the same way as before. I'll take out the hello, we don't need that anymore. So now this is all componentized. So let's take a look at inspect here. Console, like no problems. But you can notice this, if I press this and then go to a different route, I get an error saying assertion failed, calling set and destroyed object. And if you remember going back to life cycles and how long lasting objects are inside Ember. With uh, components, every time you change to a different place in the program, your component gets destroyed, while in controllers, they don't. They're, long, they're longer lasting and li they live longer. So you would have to have, so this is another reason, you would have to have like some is destroy inside your component here to detect when the component is being destroyed and then make sure that if it's in the promise somehow stop the promise so you're gonna have to write a bunch of boilerplate code code for that which makes things more difficult so you can see right here so I press it I'm fine but once I go to another ring if I'm right in the middle I get an error see another error there so obviously that's not good okay so let's try Ember concurrency to see if it fixes some of those. And let's take, we see here, and see if we can boil it down to something a little bit more simpler. So we're gonna go Ember G install, actually, install Ember concurrency. Installing now. Okay. And just to make sure, I'm going to stop and restart my server. Make sure it starts okay. And restart. Okay, we're all good here. So now let's try to refactor this. Just give me one second. So instead of using an action here, let's create an, something else called, um, we'll create a task, number concurrency. We can see here in the examples then we need to create a task. So let's try creating a task. Let's do start task. We'll task function, we'll create our generator here. We'll also put something to drop at the end. Inside this task We'll we'll do a yield fetch data and we'll set this dot set. Well, can we do this? And we'll do this dot set data to y. Okay. 
Okay. So now we have the start task in here. So let's go back to our component. And we're going to leave this here for now. So, but let's do if, and we called it start task is idle. A block statement here. Else. If. Hey, so I did a little bit of editing here to make this a little bit more smooth, this video. So I went ahead and I commented out the button that we had before that was connected to the action. And you can see here we have our start task is idle. We have our data message. So what this is saying is that our start task, when it's idle, when it's not doing anything, display the actual data, which is a little bit different than our last example where we actually showed a spinner. So we actually had an offset in the first example. But in this example, when we're saying it's idle, go ahead and show the, the data. But when it's not idle, so when it's thinking and doing things, go ahead and show the spinner. So there's one more thing we need to do to kick this all off, is we need to create a button. Now, you can take a look at this button here, and we can just copy and paste it. But you can actually, if you look at the start task here, this isn't an action. This is just a, a method or function on, on in there, um, in the component itself. So we can't actually run this action like this, but we can do is we can use the on click and use our double curly braces and we can perform and we just write the name of the task, start task like this. So what this is saying is that on the click of the button, it's going to run the start task for us. And then we're going to see when it's idle, we're going to go show the message. When it's not idle, show the spinner. So if we save it, we take a look here, we press me, we see it, and we see the four. So if we hit it a bunch of times, it's not going to repeat over and over again like it did before. Also, another thing, if we press this button here and then we hit another route, even though the component was destroyed, it's not going to give us a big error message in the console, which is really nice. So we don't have to do any of that. Um, so you, that's really nice. And then one of the reasons also that when we can hit it many, many times, it's not doing anything is this dot drop here. So that really says to it, just drop every other input except the one until the, the task is yielded. So that makes it a lot easier. So we can see here, so everything is working great. One other thing to point out, I did have to add this import statement at the top, task. We're not using timeout, but I put it in there anyways for member concurrency. And if we wanted to use timeout, we can do something like this, yield, yield timeout, and then like a second. So it yield fetch data and timeout. So now it's taking 1001, 1002. So now it's taking two seconds, 1001, 1002. So it's taking a little bit longer. So that's something else we could use if we needed. And finally, if you look at the docs and we look at the loading UI, the managing tasks and concurrencies, here is what everything does. You can actually have it restartable and you can have it in queue and you can drop in. You can actually look at how it works here. So if you double click on it, it cancels the first two, the third one runs drop drop modifier drops the tasks that are performed while another run is running so that's everything there so if you like this video please comment below let me know and I'd love to have more subscribers so definitely subscribe if you can I'm clicking the little subscribe button thanks and have a great day